because the system itself is um you know it is is dying is dying old ways of living the old ways of doing things it's not it's not going to last for too much longer y'all i'm just saying so all the young kids that may not understand it yet that's fine you're going to come into this but to my generation be better be better do not get distracted out here do not get you know, do not get to a place where you're stagnant. We have a lot of entrepreneurs. We, we, we have crypto. We have NFTs. We, we've redefined art. We have the metaverse coming. We have all these great things coming. You know what I mean? But still, when chaos happens and trauma happens, we revert back to our old ways. They're trying to do everything possible in order to keep us in a low vibrational state. A low vibrational state. If you don't know what low vibrational state of being is, please go look it up. But I'm specifically talking to my generation right now that if we do not teach our kids the truth of this world and what has happened and what has taken place, it will it will be lost in history. We will be lost. We will be the generation that's lost in history. Black, white, red, yellow, no matter what color you are, there has been some type of part of your history or our human history that has been erased for purposes that go way beyond our understanding. What's good, folks? Welcome back to The Furnished Mind. So Kyrie Irving just did a live stream, of course. Um, this is after the announcement of his uh, suspension from the Brooklyn Nets. Um, just to provide context, uh, the roadmap to Kyrie's return, they revealed that it was a six-step process they wanted um, him to go through. So first and foremost, Kyrie has to publicly apologize for uh, sharing the uh, social media post that was linked to uh, an Alex Jones documentary. That's the first step. Um, next, he must meet with the NBA commissioner, Adam Silver, and local Jewish leaders, as well as the Nets owner, Joe Tsai. Next, they want Kyrie Irving to uh, specifically speak with the media and issue a verbal apology for promoting the film, acknowledging that the message is harmful and untrue. He also has to share the apology on his social media accounts. In addition, he has to go through sensitivity training. And to put the icing on the cake, Kyrie Irving also has to donate half a million dollars to uh, anti-hate causes and then undergo some additional training to understand anti-Semitism. Now, as of now, Kyrie Irving has been suspended at least five games for repeatedly refusing to apologize. So if you guys don't know, Adam Silver, the NBA commission, is Jewish, so he has been the one uh, meeting with Irving um, to go ahead and just discuss everything that's been going on. Now we know Kyrie Irving is one of the biggest stars in this league and also an absolute generational talent. This is not the type of player that the league wants to see go. We haven't seen a player as skilled as Kyrie Irving ever. Um, this guy is absolutely talented. The only issue is he's, he's a handful of off the court he gets into a lot of media trouble etc cetera, etc cetera. but look within this situation there's a lot of people that support him we're not uh, i'm not upset with what he's, he's doing here lastly this was a post from jay williams uh ex nba player and now nba commentator of espn just kind of dropping knowledge on uh what's been going on with the matter here what we feel like happens with Kyrie is even after an apology it's not enough we feel like there needs to be more. And a lot of people I've spoken to over the last couple of days talk about this thing, older mentors of mine, talk about buck breaking. And so we talk about tropes. This is something that we feel like in the black community that happened way back in the day, where if there was a slave that was defiant, right? He got broken in front of everybody in order to show that he was not in a position of power. And that at the end of the day, he had to do what he was told to do because that's what was mandated of him. And there's a bigger situation going on. What's happening with Kyrie Irving? If the Nets don't want him to be there, just say you don't want him to be there. But we should hold everybody accountable, even owners of teams accountable with things that are happening in other countries, i.e. China and Uyghurs and the Muslim genocide that is occurring that we hear Ennis Cantor talk about. But we don't keep the same energy for everybody. We pick and choose what conversational points we want to make more polarizing. And 
I might lose my job. I might lose deal opportunities in the future for speaking out about even the platforms that continue to promote and profit a movie that is considered anti-Semitic to billions of people. They don't have to be accountable. Who is accountable? But we're gonna put everything on the shoulders of Kyrie Irving, who even though he said, I cannot be anti-Semitic because if I know where I came from, stating that he's one of the four lost tribes. He's saying that blacks and Jews come from the same entity, the same thing. But we don't want to understand nuance. We want to be triggered by words. And we like fire. And we like things that are, you know, going viral on social media. And everybody has some kind of hot take. And we're calling people idiots. And we're calling people names because that's what's that's what we do. We just destroy each other. I ain't going to destroy each other, man. I'm not going to do that. Is Kyrie Irving anti-Semitic? Hell no. Could he have gone about it maybe a different way? That's what I would have advised him to do. But I'm not going to let you guys sit out here and make this dude out to be like he is a villain, like he is a bad person. He is looking to explore his heritage. Now, you can crucify me if you want. I don't give a damn anymore. It's time for people to start speaking out with nuance and speaking out on the principles they stand for. That's all I'll say.